What's war in Ukraine got to do with Russian oil and gas? President Zelensky lets the cat out of the bag. Justin Trudeau finally gets his way as Pope Francis gets set to apologize to indigenous Canadians. Governor Ron DeSantis defends first graders from public school sexual predators. Joe Biden gets another booster. And Bishop Athanasius Schneider is in the house. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Michael Matt, and this is The Remnant Underground. Before we get into tonight's program, I wanted to share with you some really good news. Those of you who read The Remnant newspaper, subscribe to The Remnant newspaper, which you should read, of course, you should subscribe to, um, comes out every two weeks, <clears throat> and it keeps you informed on things. So about 30 years ago, in that newspaper, uh, I reported for the first time on what's known as the, the, the Great Pentecost Pilgrimage to Chart France. So we set up the American chapter, the official U.S. chapter, 29 years ago. We've done it 29 times in a row. We've organized this thing. It's a three-day, two-night, 70-mile walking pilgrimage from Paris to Chartres. This is where I actually got to experience and, be, and the, the whole idea of unite the clans. You know, they don't speak this, most of them don't speak English. They're from every country you can think of meeting every year in France for this walk together. It's very difficult three-day walk. We sleep on the ground, you walk, the whole thing. It's a real pilgrimage. And it wasn't just for Catholics. Plenty of Protestants, non-Catholics have walked that thing with me over the years. You can have these long conversations as you walk along the road to Chartres. Do Catholics really worship statues? Do Catholics worship the Mother of God? Because that's what I've always, I've always heard that. Of course, this is absolute nonsense, but it's along the road to Chartres that many good things and understandings, people come together and realize what we're really doing here on this pilgrimage of life, hugely important. And then all of a sudden, this great font of grace, this great opportunity to unite the clans was shut, was shut down, was canceled by, of course, COVID. Last week, France announces that Americans can enter enter the EU, enter France with nothing more than a, a, COVID, a, a negative COVID test. So here's the bottom line. Here's the good news. I'm going in. We are going in. It's like going in behind enemy lines into occupied France. We're doing this for our country. We're doing this as a sort of victory over COVID day. <laughs> you know, we, we won. We came through. We kept faith. We kept hope alive. And I want to make a special note to those who are still locked down. For no good reason at all. We're doing it for you. We're going to show the world that we're going to come back. We're going to keep on fighting, climbing, clawing back against this maniacal system, this globalist system. We're going to take cameras to expose the maniacal Trudeau-type tyrants for what they are. That we're breaking out of this prison, this globalist gulag, and we're fighting back. That's what this is all about. We're going to reunite those clans and fight back against the madmen who are trying to use this thing, this, this pandemic, to reset the world. We've gone over and over and over of that, of course. And some of these lunatics are really hanging on. I'm going to get my second booster shot. I'm not sure what I'm doing on stage. I'm just a get what if President Zelensky said you have a vaccine, they get a vaccine under five, is there, are there enough funds? The show must go on. And speaking of the show and actors, President Zelensky, now I'm talking about this Ukraine thing for the last three or four shows, President Zelensky has come clean this week. Now remember, I'm not gonna, weeks ago on this show, sitting down here in, in the underground, what did we say? We said that this whole thing in Ukraine is fake and gay. And it's all about what? It's all about the Green Manhattan Project. You remember that show where we, where we talked about that? Well, now Zelensky, after I think losing a little bit of the shine, the shine's come off this character with his little green t-shirt, well, now he comes right out and admits exactly what we said on this show at the beginning of the war 
a month ago. Russian aggression against Ukraine and against everything on which is built our lives in Europe is an argument to stop the green transformation on the continent. Europe must move away from Russian oil. And of course, everyone, all the people on YouTube, even on the Catholic side of things, are all backpedaling and slamming on the brakes. Did you know there are Nazis in Ukraine? Well, we don't like Nazis. We're going to take off our, our Ukrainian lapel pin. Well, well, welcome to the party. You know? Leading from behind. It's always a crowd pleaser. But here's the thing. How is it that Michael Matt and the Reddit Underground nailed this thing in Ukraine on day one of that war? How do we know that? Were we prophets? No. We've been at this for 30 years, so you got to get used to this crazy after a while. But the reason that we knew this was going on is because the people who are selling the war, the politicians, the media people, telling you to freak out, telling you what to think, <laughs> they're children of the father of lies. I'm not exaggerating. They really are. You can tell they're lying if they're moving their lips, as the old joke goes. And they went deep on this one. Ireland's sorrow and pain is now the Ukraine, and St. Patrick's name is now Zelensky. <laughs> now, think about that, because here's where it gets important. This is like a trade secret I'm going to share with this audience. How do we know? Now, this crack, crackling old, cackling old shrew has been doing what? She's been lobbying for the fundamental right to kill unborn babies for the past 40 years. Now, are you seriously going to stand with Ukraine because Nancy Pelosi tells you to? When Nancy Pelosi tells you to do something, you know you gotta do the opposite. You know it's not true. You know it's a lie. And this, by the way, this week, this is the same nut job who's referring to you know, Justice Clarence Thomas, one of the great men in this country, black Catholic men, that he should never have been appointed to the Supreme Court, while well, Pelosi praises this peculiar little moron as someone who is very qualified for the Supreme Court. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. It's, it's not even funny anymore, is it? She doesn't know what a woman is. And I actually think she doesn't. That's the thing, and that's what I want to talk about tonight. The darkness of intellect that comes with a formal rejection of Almighty God, generation after generation. You see? And we're not supposed to talk about this. You're not supposed to mention it. They're not going to mention it in Fox News. All we're supposed to do is talk about the things that are acceptable, two-party political systems and all of that, lowering taxes, the pocketbook issues. You don't bring God up because that's, not, that's irrelevant. We're, we've moved beyond that. All of us have. But see, have we? And is it ever going to be okay as we continue to just careen out of control as a society? Is it ever going to be okay to say, gee, I wonder, I wonder if maybe, maybe we should go back and see uh, where, we, where we told God to go to hell? Maybe that wasn't such a great idea. Because this imbecile that I just showed you, she didn't start the fire. I don't blame her. I can't even think about her. I don't expect anything else anymore. She literally is the generation, she's among the generation that grew out of the ashes of Christendom on fire. See, they burn Christendom, and out of the ashes, poor, mutated people like that with darkened intellects rose up. Just like, for that matter, the President of the United States. To everyone celebrating Transgender Day of Visibility, I want you to know that your President sees you. Jill, Kamala, Doug, our entire administration sees you for who you are, made in the image of God and deserving of dignity, respect, and support. Now, here's the thing as we look at all this happening in our enlightened world, um, our benighted enlightened world, the proofs now of the existence of evil are simply omnipresent. They're everywhere now. I mean, just look at the faces of the young people. Look what they're doing to their bodies. Look at the sadness. Look at the suicide. Look at the drug abuse and the crime. I mean, carjackings. Everything is absolute chaos, right? What are all those things, if not proof of the darkened intellect, of the diabolical disorientation? I understand it's not sophisticated to talk about that. That's for church. That's for synagogue, maybe. That's for, you know, Sunday prayer meetings. But friends, we got to start talking about that. We must start talking about that. 
Because look, what, look what's happening to the good fellows, the, the few that we have left in politics. I'm referring to a man like Ron DeSantis down in Florida. What's he doing right now? The poor guy is down there pleading his case to do what? To protect first, second, and third graders from sexual freaks and predators that want to teach third graders, second graders, first graders how to change their gender. The bill prohibits classroom instruction about sexuality or things like transgender in K through three classrooms. And after third grade, those curriculums need to be age appropriate. Third graders. What is going on here other than evil, the manifestation of evil in our midst? It wasn't that long ago. Think back. Think back to Opie Taylor. Imagine you turn on the TV and you watch Mayberry, Andy Griffith, and there's Opie getting schooled by Mrs. Crump on how to become a little girl. Imagine how obscene that would appear to anyone living in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, even 80s, even 90s. You have your homework assignments. Class dismissed. So the question is, what's happened? And how far is this going to go? How dark is this going to get? Because you know this, right? You know in your heart of hearts that what they're doing to children is not just immoral anymore, right? I mean, it's, it's straight up satanic, you know? And I don't blame Ron DeSantis. People say, well, Ron DeSantis, why won't he say more? Why won't he do more? He, he's defending third graders? Well, he should go much further than that. Okay, I think so too. But it's not his fault, and he's got to be saying to himself, okay, I like to say it, he's got to be saying to himself, where's the Catholic Church on this? Isn't this, isn't this sort of their, their purview? Isn't this their bailiwick? Isn't, that what, isn't the church supposed to be talking about these moral issues? I'm a politician. A guy like DeSantis simply must be looking across and saying, where's Pope Francis? And that, friends, is the point of tonight's program. Where is Pope Francis? Because you get so used to this stuff, you know? After a while, you start just kind of taking it for granted that this is how it is now. But where is the Pope? Seriously. Poor DeSantis, this guy can barely talk about this. It's a serious moral issue. You know, without green lighting, one of the sins that cried to heaven for vengeance. If you notice this, they talk about his law down in Florida, and he always has to say, is to like burn a little bit of the incense to the gods. He says, well, I'm not talking about gay. The word gay is not even in my bill. I got no problem with gay. That's not, this is not about gay. He's got to make sure he proves that. Why? Because we lost that war. But guess what? And the reason we lost it is because the Catholic Church was absent from the discussion. Catholic Church pulled back, remember? Climate change. Come on. But the problem is, when we have to face this right now, which is why it becomes very urgent for us to look at our spiritual leaders, our priests, bishops, Pope, yes, Pope, and try to call them back to their duty, because in five years, maybe, maybe even less from right now, a good guy like DeSantis, you know what he's going to be saying? He's going to be saying, I'm not talking about transgenderism. In fact, the word transgender is not even in my bill. All I'm doing is trying to protect third graders from classroom bestiality. Where is this going to end? Simply killing children and eating them in classrooms? I mean, where is this evil going to end? I used to make fun of us, you know, people like traditional Catholics in my father's generation for worrying about the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Look where it's come. Look where entertainment has come now. Look at the sick, twisted freaks who now have access to, to millions and millions of children. You know what that means? They have access to the future. They control the future. It is in 2017 in Andy Mac that we finally got the chance to see a whole Disney story about an openly gay character on Disney Channel. And they've been going after kids for a long time. And now we're left with saying, well, who's gonna, who's gonna do anything about it? You know, where, where are the adults in the room? Where, where are the babysitters? Where's the moral authority? And if you're just going to say, well, F Fox News, of course, <laughs> you're just deceiving yourself. Here's the latest from Fox. Caitlyn Jenner is joining Fox News as an on-air contributor. The former Olympic gold medalist and reality TV star will provide commentary across Fox's programming and platforms. She will make her first appearance on Hannity Thursday evening. 
Fox News is hopeless. The entertainment industry is hopeless. So who do we turn to? We turn to the moral authority, right? We would turn to the Vatican. We turn to Pope Francis. Tonight, an historic shift from a leader of an ancient institution. Pope Francis becoming the first pope in the Catholic Church's 2,000-year history to endorse civil unions for gay couples. But this week, Francis is meeting with the indigenous activists of Canada to work out a papal apology for the staggering missionary success story that was Canada. Now, let me clarify. So he's going to visit. He's, he's invited them to come and visit. Of course, what Francis is going to do is he's going to listen because this is the church of accompaniment. He doesn't teach anymore. He doesn't preach anymore. God help him. He certainly doesn't evangelize anymore, but he will listen. And what they want is a papal apology for the fact that Catholic schools, the fact that, Catholic, that Canada is Catholic. Here's what's going on. In Vatican City today, this was their moment. Songs of support and strength from a delegation led by the Assembly of First Nations after a long-awaited meeting with the head of the Catholic Church. Pope Francis met them in private for two hours, a milestone, they said, in the journey of reconciliation over the church's role in residential schools. Oh, I know what you're going to say. You're gonna, oh, my gosh, that's... Really? I mean, the Catholic nuns were up there just abusing, beating, killing children, perhaps eating them. That's unbelievable. That's just... I had no idea. Well, do you know why you had no idea? Because it's fake news. I want to ask you uh, your opinion and your reaction to that big sort of bombshell news story that we had last year about the discovery, apparent discovery of unmarked graves at residential schools. Well, Candace, this is probably the worst case of fake news uh, that I have ever seen in Canada. Not a single uh, uh, student has been identified. No grave has been identified as belonging to a student. No body has been exhumed. Uh, there is actually no evidence at all that these are the um, uh, the graves of students who died at residential school. So um, there is actually nothing to this story about mass graves or unmarked graves. Until we get some positive evidence, uh, the, the story should be completely discounted. But it doesn't matter. They don't need evidence. They just need to say these things because they're at war with Christianity up there. And in Canada, if you're at war with Christianity, you're at war with the Catholic Church. So this guy who's a Catholic, is ticked off about what those nuns were doing. The Catholic Church ran more than half of the schools, but it's the only institution not to have made a formal apology. As a Catholic, I am deeply disappointed. The Prime Minister says the Pope needs to say sorry, and the Church must release all residential school records. If it refuses, Justin Trudeau says the government is prepared to take measures to compel it to. Do you want to know what those evil Catholics looked like well, up in Canada, the folks that built Canada? What did they look like? Justin Trudeau is all upset with them, a little ferret, yeah, he did do something about it. Telling the Pope he must apologize for what those penguins did up there. Here's what they looked like. The first female saint of Canada was canonized in 1982, Saint Marguerite Bourgeois. She was born in 1620 in Troyes, France. Marguerite would go back and forth to France, recruiting female teachers to her school. But when she learned of the foundation of Ville Marie, now old Montreal, Canada, she volunteered to be a teacher for the children of the settlers there. Marguerite was popular among Ville-Marie settlers because of her works for the church and the community. Now, even Cardinal Tagle, who I'm certainly no fan of his, even he can't find fault with this evil <laughs> doer up there, Sister Ted Bundy, according to the ferret, right? Car Cardinal Tagle can't figure out. He's telling a story of a hero. So many great stories, heroes up there. I'm sure many of you, especially if you're not Catholic, you, you, you have the same black legends, the same myths. You're not being told that the Catholic Church founded the hospital system, are you? Google that, look it up, even Wikipedia gets it right. The Catholic Church founded hospitals. The whole idea of hospitals, a thousand years ago. The whole idea of orphanages and schools, educating 
you know, indigenous people, children, giving them a better life, teaching them, yes, about God. But first, every missionary worth his salt knew that when he encountered the indigenous peoples of Canada or anywhere else, first thing he did is taught them how to, how to stay warm, fill their bellies, and then he told them about God. Now, you may not like his God, his story of God, but that's what it was all about. Isaac Jones went up there. Before he was done, the Iroquois had, had gnawed off his fingers. Do you know why? Because they figured out he couldn't say mass. He had to keep his fingers like this for mass. If they chewed them off, he couldn't say mass anymore. He went back to France to recuperate, and then guess what he did? He came back to the frozen bush, the tundra of Canada, out of love. There was no gold up there for him. And now they've convinced these poor woke folk up in Canada to go to Rome, to be invited by the Vatican to go to Rome, because they're claiming the legacy of Sister Marguerite that we just showed you Cardinal Tagli talking about. As they put it, we'll throw this article up on the screen, her legacy and accomplishments contributed to colonial institutions that caused significant harm. I'll have Walter throw up on the screen a vintage silent movies about what the Catholic Church actually looked like 100 years ago. What you're seeing now are images of the Catholic Church before the Second Vatican Council, of course. You're seeing the Catholic Church that built Canada. You're seeing the lily of Canada in full bloom. You're seeing piety, piety like this, which is right there with that woman right there. It was a normal part of everyday living. You don't see anybody eating children, do you? Sexually abusing them, right? No, just a normal Christian society that was extremely healthy, law and order, no toppling of statues, no raping, no carjacking, no shootings, just a society growing to live and serve God, you see? There's the great shrine there. That's the great shrine of St. Anne de Beaupre. I've been there. This is what was happening. Culture, liturgy, liturgy spirituality, even architecture in Canada a few hundred years ago. So they actually are there right as we're shooting this show. They're demanding that Pope Francis travel to one of the provinces in Canada and beg forgiveness for his church having brought the light of Christ, the Lumen Christi, into the, the lives and the world of the indigenous peoples of Canada. You tell me how this isn't of the devil. Francis is not bringing any of this up. Please, God, may he have an awakening and do so, because at the moment he's just listening to the cry of the indigenous, allegedly mistreated by all those Catholic nuns who devoted their lives and gave up everything for the indigenous peoples of Canada. <laughs> They're saying that those nuns mistreated all these children in schools down for the past couple hundred years, right? While they're ignoring what's happening to children, our children, right now, today, in 2022, who are being subjected to this sort of thing on a daily basis. Hi, I'm Miss P. I am the director for Directing Story Hour this hour. Welcome! It's difficult to see what we've become as a society, as a godless, darkened society. And one naturally wonders. One asks the question, Where's the Pope? Where's Francis in the face of that level of depraved abuse of little children? You know where he is? He's saving the planet. Yes, thank you for, for signing up for the time and for the truth. And really, it means a lot. But the few continue to walk, eh? Continue. I decisori politici che prenderanno parte alla COP26 di Glasgow sono chiamati con urgenza a offrire efficaci risposte alla crisi ecologica in cui viviamo e in questo modo concreta speranza alle generazioni future. Just once. Wouldn't it be magnificent? Wouldn't it be wonderful? If the successor of St. Peter, the vicar of Christ on earth, could show that same level of concern and passion and pastoral love for the unborn children of this world just once. The greatest threat to humanity in the world today is not Joe Biden. It's not Klaus Schwab. It's not even the Great Reset we talk so much about. The threat is a pope who cares more about polar bears 
and melting ice caps than slaughtered unborn babies and mankind's open rebellion against God. He doesn't bring it up. He goes on and on and on about inequity. But what about iniquity? Does he think it exists? Does he understand what's happening? Does he know how many people, according to the teachings of his own church, are going to hell, everlasting damnation, because he's let them down, because he no longer speaks the truth to them? Does he know? He thinks it's passionate to tell these poor people, these homosexual gay people, that everything's fine, when on his own books, it says everything is not fine. So he's lying to them in order to get the praise of the world. You think I'm bl blaming the transgender people who don't know if they're a man or a woman, a boy or a girl? God help us! What a tragedy for them! What is happening to them? Would you want to go through that? Do you know why they're going through that? Because nobody loves them enough to tell them the truth. Because no one has given them God's law. Because no one has stood up even for natural law. Because the Catholic Church even has contributed to the diabolical disorientation that at the end of the day leaves young people not even sure what sex they are, let alone what God they believe in. Whose fault is that? The young people? No. So who do we blame? Long dead popes from the 1950s or 60s? Where do we go here? The only person who's in any position at the moment to do anything about it, dear friends, is the Pope. And he's AWOL. He's missing in action. He's saving the planet. So proud of himself because he goes out on the peripheries to the marginalized. What's he talking about? Those are buzzwords. That's, that's a pope, that's a man bragging about himself. Oh, I care so much about the peripheries. This is not humility. Men don't act this way. Men of God don't tell everybody how great they are because they care about the marginalized. So the question is, what about the spiritually marginalized? The morally marginalized? on the truly wretched peripheries of secular godlessness in this world. Does anybody care about them? When they grow up and they get addicted to drugs by the time they're not even growing up, by the time they're 12, they're hooked on drugs, they're suicidal by the time they're 15, nobody's given them anything to, to live for. And Francis says he's on the peripheries, the marginal, what about them? How much more marginalized can you be than to think God doesn't exist and have the Pope and the bishops and the priests totally silent in the public square about returning our society to God and to his law? I don't care anymore if the planet burns up, if preserving the life of the planet means the loss of these children, the loss of their immortal souls by the million, the continued slaughter of the unborn in the wombs of their mothers by the million. Francis laments the plight of poor children, good for him. The Catholic Church has always been dedicated to the poor. Do you think he invented that? Every Catholic orphanage, every soup kitchen, every hospital in the world was invented to take care of the needs of the poor, Francis. Have you not noticed a billion morally and spiritually impoverished children living in the slums of secularism in every single country in the world today, including and especially the rich countries, America, the United States, the UK, the EU, where the impoverishment has nothing to do with food or money, it has to do with an impoverishment of spirit, of soul, of grace. All your priests just prance around doing this and everything has gone to hell. They can't even access the church anymore without encountering something like this. 
And Francis has got bigger issues now than worrying about homosexuality and the clergy. Oh man, come on, who's he to judge? When climate change is the issue of the day. Climate change, when that wins him the accolades of all of his globalist friends. Seven continents, five oceans, 8.7 million known species of life. One precious, irreplaceable planet. One common home. And it's in peril. This year, Pope Francis called on humanity to change our own fate. Laudato Si was his rallying cry. Oh, Francis. As Thomas, to paraphrase Thomas More, it profit a man nothing to give his soul for the entire world. But for Bono, pro-abort, pro-gay marriage degenerate, who's also pro-Francis, what do we do with that? I'm a cradle Catholic and I'm asking you, what do we do with that? Get used to it, say it's okay, it's not okay. This is what's happened to the church, to the Catholic church, to the, if you wanna call it a denomination, the largest Christian community in the world. What other than the devil at work are we looking at here? When Bono is the guy who's out praising the head of the Catholic church for defending the planet rather than babies. He's more exercised by economic inequity than the spiritual starvation of millions. His church is in full-blown apostasy, and yet he's cracking down on what? On the Latin Mass. Why? That's a good question. In fact, I asked Bishop Athanasius Schneider that question just this morning. What's happening? Why did he think it was necessary in the middle of a pandemic to attack that, to try to, to, try to cancel that? I don't know. <laughs> He has to answer to God. God will ask him these questions, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Since they are living simply in the naturalistic way of understanding religion, and this form of the traditional mass is disturbing for them, and therefore they, have, they want to abolish this, but they will not succeed. You can watch that full interview, by the way, at remnant-tv.com. The bottom line is this, friends. The most recognized spiritual authority on earth, once again, is playing for the other side. We need to call him out on this. We need to stop making excuses for what's happening and projecting what we wish Francis was saying, what we wish Francis was doing on Francis, when all of the evidence suggests something completely opposite of what we want him to be. So yes, for the sake of our children, for God's sake, for the sake of the future. I would beg you to join me, to join what we do down here at the remnant, down here in the underground, to spend every waking moment appealing, praying. First of all, we need a lot of prayer in the world today. Another thing that's not popular on Fox News, but that's what's needed, actually needed, prayer. But then in addition to that, begging our priests, then there are a lot of good priests out there, a lot of good bishops out there, begging them to do the same, to become outspokenly honest about what's happening here. The church has been infiltrated, <laughs> obviously, and to stop pretending like it hasn't been. My friends, we have a duty before God. We have a duty before God, the most sacred duty in the world, in our lives, to speak to keep the faith and to make our voices heard. It is not charity to go silent on this. It's not charity. Even if the popes are silent, somebody has to speak for the church. If it's left to us, poor, miserable sinners that we are, to speak the truth about what the Catholic Church is and teaches and expects of humanity in order to defend the rights of God, then we're the ones that are gonna do it. He says, that's becoming increasingly obvious with the passing of each new day. The world is simply running out of time. We don't have time to ignore God anymore or to act like he doesn't matter or to act like only in polite conversations we would never bring up God. No, that has to end because nothing matters more now than doing that, bringing God back into this. Yes, uniting the clans around the standard of Christ the King defending all those children of the world who have been abandoned on the peripheries, 
marginalized by a Catholic church and her human element who doesn't give a damn defending those children, calling the priests and the bishops to defend those children against demons in high places, and begging Christ, our King, our sovereign Lord and King, to return to our civilization, to come back to us and to deliver us from the evil that is our own godlessness.